Good morning, good night, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. We are back for another and just like that episode. If you're new here, hello, I'm Alyssa. If you guys are not aware, and just like that premieres a new episode every single Thursday, so that means um, a new video of mine will come up every single Thursday as well. So if you don't want to miss out, subscribe and hit the bell so that YouTube slash Google can notify you. And some of you guys, according to the back end, are watching every week and still not subscribed. What are you waiting for? If you're having fun, you like the content, subscribe and help a girl out. I would really love to hit 800 by the end of the season. I don't know if it's possible, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But without further ado, let's watch the episode. Hey, hey, just finished watching the episode. So, and just like that, episode eight, 100 years ago, that is the title. I feel like a whole lot of nothing happens. You guys, the way that time moves here is just moving too fast. Just like Carrie and Aiden are moving too fast. It's been a month since the last time they went on their first day after a hundred years. And there's just a month that went by and we didn't get to see. We didn't get to see it. When they were at brunch or lunch or whatever and Charlotte mentioned it's been a whole month and I get to finally meet him again. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> Bitch, what? Why are we not getting to see it? Because I feel like it is moving too fast. Apart from the fact that these characters are even saying that it's moving too fast, like Miranda, who I love, is always, always the voice of reason, bringing back the old Miranda, she tells Carrie that it's moving too fast. But Carrie feels like, but if it feels right and it's moving fast, who cares? It feels right. It doesn't matter. And as a, as a storytelling point of view, I'm not loving that we didn't get to see the buildup to carrie and aiden being back together again because what i thought may be just like uh he's in, in town and we're just doing the a few dates and sex thing but now it it seems like oh we're doing we're gonna fully go forth and doing this long distance relationship thing where they're gonna be seeing each other she's planning to go to virginia to his farm to stay at his farm and also meet his children which are his three boys 17 14 and 20 i believe and Things are moving pretty quickly. And then let's address the elephant in the room. She tells Miranda and then she tells Aiden later on that she feels like she had made a big mistake with Big. What? I don't, I don't love that. And for the reasons, I don't love it because you made those decisions back then to do what you did by continuing to pursue Big. Like... And she could have never given herself fully to Aiden because she never fell out of love for Big. And then I just feel like things happened the way that they were supposed to because she was always hung up on Big. Aiden was a great guy who wasn't, at the end of the day, he just wasn't meant to be. He was not meant to be with her. And I, I don't love how they're trying to kind of like backtrack that and make it seem like, no, like Aiden was supposed to be the one she was supposed to be ending up with in life you have these decisions that you have to make and she made that choice you know and i i i, I would have preferred if she i would have preferred if she treated it more like a situation where she recognizes okay i had my life with big back in the day that was a whole thing and now there's there's this new chapter to my life my life has gone on and now it's put Aiden back into my life. This is a whole new chapter. Like, why are you backtracking saying like you had made a mistake and you lived a happy life? I mean, once they got married and figured it out and moved in together, they seemingly had a happy life together. And then he died. And then now there's this new chapter. I would have preferred it presented that way to me. I don't like this whole like, I made a huge mistake back in the day. Because, you know, for a lot of those years, you made that choice and you were happy. So why are you backtracking now? Because it's been a month and Aiden still can't bring himself to go to Carrie's apartment. Carrie tries to find a way to have a place for them to stay when they're in New York together. When he's doing the whole back and forth and he's staying in town because the hotels are getting too expensive. Which, how are the hotels getting too expensive when they are both rich? Like, he sold his furniture company for lots of money. She's a rich widow. Or are we complaining about the prices? I mean, I guess it's that expensive in New York, I guess. But that was weird. Like, they're both privileged white people complaining about money, whatever. But this is a way for us to see that... Shay has an Airbnb in New York and Carrie and they still talk to each other. They're still friends. So she 
she asked them for a favor to use the Airbnb. But this building is very much not about the Airbnb life. So they have to sneak around and be kind of very ninja-like where they're giving like fake names and they have to lie and say that they're Shay's cousins. And I have to question, are these management people really buying this story? Because I feel like <laughs> it seems and looks fake. So they go into the Airbnb under false pretenses. And this Airbnb is empty for some reason. So they have to go ahead and shop and put things inside the Airbnb. These are the types of things that are happening that makes me feel like, okay, like nothing is really happening. How is this Airbnb shopping pushing this story forward? How is this pushing this relationship forward? There's things that are written in here that just feel like filler. And that's why I feel like a lot of this was just kind of boring. Some things I didn't find boring and it's giving me stuff to talk about is the whole bumpy road with Carrie and Aiden. I think it's kind of bumpy. I just think, again, I just not loving how that happened way too fast and without acknowledging and honoring the past that they had with, you know, their other partners and whatnot. But some other things that happen is we see Charlotte is getting ready to go back to work. And what that means is she is clothes shopping and she's feeling self-conscious because she's trying on this new dress that looks very cute. It looks very Charlotte on her, but she is not loving how her stomach is looking in the dress. She feels like she has like a pudge and she's just feeling really self-conscious and is sensitive about it. And everyone's telling her that she looks great. And they're all telling her, just remove the bell and it'll look fine. But she doesn't want to remove the belt. She's feeling like, no, but the belt is what makes the dress. And I kind of agree. But I also feel like she did look fine. She looked great. But it's kind of a commentary on how you feel about yourself, what you're wearing, what you're doing. So she is trying all different types of things. She's trying to do a bone broth diet to get rid of the pudge fast enough. It's not working. She is also trying to wear Spanx uh, or some type of Spanx, some type of like Faha to like hold her stomach in and you know it's quite painful she can't breathe but it's she finds a way to she wears the space as she enters the building for her new job but then she like takes it off in the bathroom throws it away thinks about it and then grabs it again and puts it in her purse so we still don't know how her first day of work is going to go and i have no idea if we're going to be able to even see what that looks like because this show just skips around certain scenes and doesn't let us see certain scenes for reasons we don't know but i think to see her first day at work would be really important for us to see because there's a whole scene of her announcing to her girls um sorry to to her daughter and her non-binary child that they are that that she's about to go back to work and this was a pretty funny scene because her kids do not care. <laughs> I think she was always kind of nervous about like leaving her kids. But like she doesn't have toddlers. She has like teenagers who are, you know, a little bit more independent than if you were to have a baby, let's say. So I think um, she at the end of the day is scared for the change more so for her than for her children. Her kids are super okay you know they want like their time away from their mom it this sounds like a blast to them like they don't really want her around for too much so the kids are okay with it husband's okay with it the dog also doesn't care because there's a scene where she asks the dog how do you feel are you gonna miss me um so yeah so it's i think the storyline for charlotte is getting a little bit better i have been complaining for the past few weeks that it, her storyline just feels like it's nonsense it feels like it's filler but it finally looks like it's going to go somewhere so i am hoping again that we're going to actually see scenes of her at work and see how she navigates that because i think that would be interesting so speaking of going back to work we see miranda going to be an intern at the human rights watch she has left the law firm she was in it for 30 years and she really so her passion now is wanting to do good and putting some good out in the world and volunteering and interning but because she is a lawyer she is a harvard graduate who was a partner at a law firm for like 30 something years she naturally just has a lot more experience and has more of a handle on things so she's immediately impressing her new boss she's being put in charge to go to this important meeting to take notes and to send the notes to the executive of the company and the other interns there are kind of hating on it a little bit because they've been there for much longer and they have not been giving these really important responsibilities yet so they start talking about her and they start texting about her back and forth at lunch while Miranda is at lunch with them and 
while I understand that it is frustrating to not be given this type of attention when you're an intern there longer, you also have to recognize the age difference here. Like this woman is in her 50s and has had so many years of work and what these girls are what like in their 20s, like there's no way that you're going to beat that. So I don't know if I were them, I would try to recognize that, take the L, take the opportunity to learn from this person, see what kind of skills that you can learn so that you can apply those skills at your current job and then take it towards the next job and figure it out. You you can't be hating on that. And I I do like, because, because Miranda is Miranda, like she will confront. I do like that she confronts the girl saying, I feel awkward because I feel like you're talking about me. Like, what's up? And I do like that she also lets her boss know that she feels weird giving all this responsibility because actually, I forgot to mention, her boss is about to be on a maternity leave and has already appointed Miranda to take charge for when she leaves. And now that puts her in an awkward position where she feels like, how am I going to take over your job when I just came in here as an intern today? But then she explains to her, because you have so much experience, it's fine, and you can't worry about other people. You can't worry how they're going to view you. They will just need to keep it pushing. So it looks like Charlotte has a new job. It looks like Miranda has a new job. And Carrie has a new bow that she will be going in and out of the Virginia farm to go see. And then comes Anthony, who is trying really hard to not bang Giuseppe. Giuseppe is the poet that we saw, I think, in the last episode. And I think I thought he was straight too, because I think um Charlotte tells us that he's a straight guy, but he ends up being gay because he starts putting on the moves on Anthony. Anthony has a scene where he's kind of rolling the dough and Giuseppe comes into the kitchen and he's like, oh, let me show you how to do that correctly. And he does the whole like, I'm going to go behind you and start kneading the dough. <laughs> it is a pretty sexy scene because you can clearly tell that Giuseppe is really into Anthony. And Anthony is taken aback by this because he just, he did not know. And then Giuseppe kind of confirms that he's gay. And then, and then Anthony right away does a bad HR move and fires Giuseppe, which... You can tell it's because, you know, he, Anthony didn't know that Giuseppe was gay and he just can't be in close proximity to him because it's going to, you know, getting into a relationship, whether that's a sexual relationship or whether it's more, it's going to make it a bit more complicated to be around each other because, you know, adding in the relationships up, it just makes things more complicated, especially in a workplace. So... I understood right away why he was doing that. It's not only because he's gay, but it's because he's gay and Anthony wants him. Like, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So I think this has potential to be a very cute relationship. Giuseppe is very, very cute. I love how he kind of also saw right through Anthony. And I like how he's pursuing him. So hopefully Anthony has a new love. Lastly, let us talk about Seema. I appreciated the storyline very much so because... So it seems like Seema is kind of going through her own thing, kind of her own insecurities about her life as a older single woman because she sees that Aiden comes back into Carrie's life. And while she feels happy for Carrie, she can't help but notice the story of this woman who has had these two great loves of her life. And meanwhile, she's had none. And she says that she can live with that because, you know, she has like her wonderful, great job. She has her great friends, but she feels like, I guess sometimes she feels like something is missing in her life. And she doesn't want to be in close proximity to somebody who gets not just one chance at love, but she's getting a whole new chance at true love. And Seema is feeling a little bit uncomfortable and, and sensitive about it. I think on the one hand, you can say she's being like way too dramatic and sensitive about it. But I don't know. I think I can understand her point of view about this. I also appreciated her being honest about it. At first, she was acting childless while trying to ignore Carrie. Like, she sees Carrie at the salon and she tried to just get up and leave and ignore her friend. But then Carrie sees her. And then they have a very honest conversation about what's been going on in Seema's head and her mind and her soul. And I liked her opening up about how she was feeling about that. Um, even though she almost didn't, she was trying to brush it under the rug, but eventually she did open up. So 
you get points for me with that. If you are going to be honest about something that you are feeling, even if it's not going to be the greatest thing that you're feeling, but you're being honest, I like that scene. I, I think I've said it before, but I really love and appreciate friendship scenes. And you could tell that like this friendship means so much to both Seema and Carrie that so that means that there's going to be some bumps in the ropes. There are always like ebbs and flows, even in friendships, you know? I think sometimes friendships in real life can be the underrated relationships because everybody in the whole world and society puts romantic relationships up on a pedestal. So so I think that's why I always appreciate when I see in the media, like in shows and movies, when there's actual like friendship moments and like dealing with like the ups and downs of that because those are true to life. They're underrated, but it's weird that it's underrated because those are, I think, the most prominent relationships in everybody's life. Everybody has at least one friend. So I'm always a I'm always a cheerleader for the friendship moments. And I we do get introduced to this new guy, this potential new guy for Seema, who is this Hollywood guy who's looking for some New York apartments for a Marvel movie, I think. I may have gotten that wrong. But it seems like he's this new dude. His name is Ravi, I believe, and he's he's very handsome. And I'm hoping this will be a new connection for Seema because I think I've said it before again. I think she's fabulous. I really like her on the show. And I I want to see her be even happier than she. I think she's happy with her life, her friends, and her what her great job. You're always rooting for somebody to, you know, find their their little like side piece that can hopefully maybe some someday become more. And I'm hoping that for Seema. I want to see her get her love story too. Thank you guys so much for watching this commentary. I feel like every week we are growing with the subs. I'm hoping to get to 800. I don't know if it'll happen but by the end of the season. Hopefully it does. If you guys are watching every week, be sure to subscribe because you're liking the content. So subscribe and also hit the thumbs up. The thumbs up helps to elevate the visibility of the video. YouTube likes to see engagement happening on the video. So that really helps me out. And I'll catch you guys next time.